We don't know how to use SketchUp, so we use Minecraft because in pervasive. Okay. So this is I start. So this is where the bank is, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start with our additions to the patio. All right. So we took the patio and we kind of like separated the two. We took out the stairs in the top part of the patio and put a gazebo there, and that's more like your indoorsy feel workspace thing. We'll go more in depth when we switch over to the presentation um, about what we want in the gazebo and what kind of style for the gazebo we want. And then um, there's a little like downhill slope thing so then it goes with the path that's going to be continued. And down on the lower end, things like picnic tables are going to be kind of a little bit of lighting stuff going on down there. And that's going to be more of your like outdoorsy thing. So there's kind of, if you want like different kind of workspaces, there's different options for you. And then we're going to go into the woods. So there's a lot of woods. And it's hard to cut down a lot of trees because that, that hurts a lot of hearts and animals and woods. So we decided that we wanted to put a trail in the woods so that we could keep the woods around it, but you could still, like, we got rid of um, enough that you could still walk through it and enjoy a nice walk without being attacked by trees. And so, like, you know, if you're sitting in an office all day and you're all, like, cramped up and you just need, like, to get a new idea, you go for a walk. It's right in your backyard of your favorite bank. And <laughs> and there's benches on the sides if you got to take a break. I mean, it's not that long of a trail, but some people don't get out much. And, um, yeah, it's a way to make the forest interactive. And it goes around a really pretty garden. Yeah. So we put a garden in because, you know, got to have something to look at when you're on the trail. Um, and we used some perennials, which don't require as much maintenance. And plants are also really good for helping with erosion around the pond. It's wonderful. Yeah. So as for the waterfall, we'll have to rebuild that because it looked like someone went back there with a sledgehammer and broke all the stones. So that's going to have to be all replaced. Um, as for like fish, uh, we're going to go with the rosy red minnows. They're easy to maintain. Um, you can actually still see them, like if the pond freezes over, you can still see them swimming under the ice. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Um, and they also help clean it too. Um, also, what kind of snails were they? They were the They're pond snails. Pond snails? Is that it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, pond snails will also help clean it as well, and as for regular fish fish, we are going with the bluegills and goldfish. And so we also want to cut out these trees that look over the parking lot so people, when they come and park, they can say, oh, that's a nice pond. We'll leave the two on the end just so there's not nothing there, but take out the middle ones so you can actually kind of see what's down okay. there. Now we're going there to go. four massive ones right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to go here. And we're so yeah, these are the minnows, obviously the bluegills and the snails, those are the ones that we hopefully can put in there, mostly these two to help clean it, and then the bluegills and the goldfish for pretties looks. <laughs> um, the pond has to at least be four to five feet deep. It can even go deeper if need be. Um, I'm not sure how deep it is now, though. So. All right, and then in terms of patio stuff, we kind of wanted to keep the gazebo feel with the feel of the building. So we went with more of like a Spanish style thing. So we'd have that kind of like tiered stuff, but it obviously it wouldn't be like this fancy. It'd be more of something with that kind of look to it. That way, it kind of sticks with the whole feel of the building. And what we wanted to do with the benches, if we could, was um, use the wood from the, because there was also going to be benches on the patio and stuff, is to use the wood from the cut down trees if we can, if there's enough of it to do something there. Um, so that kind of like bench style there. And these three right here, it's not necessarily that kind of look, but that's the only kind of pictures I could find to explain it. So we want to try to find some sort of chair that has a desk on the side so people can go out and sit, but also have a place to work if they don't have a laptop or something or like a standing desk or just fun different things and two different options for picnic table style 
design stuff. Um, another option with all the rock up there, we could replace that with mulch, but I know that's kind of a, like maintenance stuff. So we can either like do mulch or rock, and we we're even thinking of expanding the brick that's already at the patio a little bit, and then having the trail go around the edge of the two different patios. Okay, so, oh thanks. Um, <laughs> there is a requirement for ponds that I learned. They need to have plants in them to keep them clean um, and to oxygenate the water for the fish. It, yeah, so it like prevents algae growth and stuff. So there are a couple of options as far as good plants for Iowa winters that will last. And then, oh, oh sorry. Um, removing the trees and stuff again in the shrubs. They're really big, so it's kind of kind of a cost to remove those. But it would really help with like being able to see it from inside the bank. So again, um, plants are really important for preventing soil erosion into the pond. And there are a lot of plants growing there now, but they're not the most attractive. Um, so these are some options that are more colorful and are also hardy in the winter. Okay, so we actually went back into the woods and like scoped it out for like things that we could look at. Um, there's a creek back there actually, and that kind of like runs along the side. That's kind of like the division of where the property line is kind of. And the property actually goes all the way back to the end of the trees. After that, there's like grass and backyards and stuff, mm -hmm. right? But then yeah. it's like that way. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty open and there's not a whole lot of trees except for like right behind the pond and around the edges, but it's pretty flat and everything. Yeah, and when we were in Minecraft, there was that one spot where we had the lots of benches in a circle. There's a little tree there with lots of, um, with the big clearing area, so we're thinking about putting a circle bench around the one tree or just something that's kind of fun just to kind of go have some little game. Okay, so the pumps were kind of hard to like, because we don't know the exact volume of the pond at the moment. But there's like a lot of different options for like pricing and all that. So there's ones to just fairly small pond. So we want to put a pump, like a pump, a uh, submersible one instead of like a one on, on the outside of the pond. And then there's like different options. There's a magnet driven one and then there's a direct drive one. So the magnetic one is more expensive, but it's more likely to last longer so it's not going to like burst and get oil and stuff into the pond as the direct drive would.